Joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal of Washington State, who chairs the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Congresswoman Jayapal, welcome to Meet the Press. Thank you so much, Kristen. It's great to be with you. It is great to have you on a very busy Sunday. So let's begin with Israel. You have called for a ceasefire in Gaza. Do you believe there's a non-military solution to the crisis that would neutralize the terror threat from Hamas and also bring home the hostages? Well, Kristen, I called for a ceasefire or at minimum a cessation of hostilities about 12 days ago. And in that time, since the beginning of, of this horrific, horrific war, um, what we have seen is now, in addition to the 1,400 Israelis who were killed, in addition to the hostages that have been taken, hundreds of hostages that have been taken by Hamas, what we are now seeing is 8 thousand Palestinians who have been killed by Israeli airstrikes, 3,000 of whom are children. We have watched 120 premature babies who are likely to die without the fuel to run their incubators. And we see 50,000 pregnant women mm -hmm. in Gaza who are going to either have to deliver their babies or die, but about 150 babies being delivered every day without food, water, or fuel. This is not a situation that is going to help either advance our long-term strategic goals of taking out Hamas, of ensuring security and peace for both Israelis and Palestinians, or frankly, our ability to hold our moral authority on the world stage by ensuring that Israel follows the international humanitarian laws or the laws of war as, as President Biden has called for. Congresswoman, as the New York Times points out today, Hamas is actually sitting on a lot of that f fuel, food and aid that you reference. Their headquarters is underneath that hospital there. So ultimately, they are the ones who are depriving the civilians of Gaza of all of those necessary aid items that you referenced. If there were to be a ceasefire, what's the guarantee that Hamas would abide by it, Congresswoman? Well, look, Kristen, first of all, um, nobody has any love for Hamas. Hamas is a terrorist organization that has deprived the Palestinian people absolutely of uh, many, many things in the time of their rule. And let's not forget that the last election where Hamas was elected was 16 years ago. Half of Palestinians are children. They were not part of that. And Hamas is not Palestinians, and pa Palestinians are not Hamas. We have to be very clear about that. But humanitarian agencies have been sending aid through approved partners. And before October 7th, it was about 500 trucks per day. Now, Kristen, since the beginning of this war, we have seen less than 100 trucks delivered. Israel has stopped the fuel from coming in um, and being delivered by trusted partners. And Kristen, I just think we have to recognize that this is a double standard. The United States rightly called out Russia for its siege of Ukraine rightly called out the attacks on the power infrastructure, the refusal to provide food and water and fuel to the Ukrainians. And we have to recognize that our credibility and our authority on the moral stage is, is greatly diminished if we do not also call out these, uh, this siege that Israel is launching on Gaza as violations of international Con law. We are losing credibility, and frankly, we're being isolated in the rest of the world. Let me ask you about what some of your fellow Democrats are saying. Senator John Fetterman, a fellow progressive, said, quote, now is not the time to talk about a ceasefire. He added, quote, Hamas does not want peace. They want to destroy Israel. We can talk about a ceasefire after Hamas is neutralized. Going back to that original question, how do you neutralize Hamas? What's your response to your... To Senator Fetterman. My, my, response, my response is that we need immediate, sustained humanitarian aid to flow into Gaza. We need the bombings, and you know, you can call it a humanitarian truce, uh, as 140 countries uh, said in the resolution that was passed at the United Nations. The United States was one of only 14 countries to oppose that resolution. 
call it a humanitarian truce, use that time to make sure we get the hostages out, both American hostages and Israeli hostages. Let's not forget, Kristen, that we also have 500 U.S. citizens plus their families who were told to go to southern Gaza because they were not safe yeah. in northern Gaza. That was the part that was going to be bombed. They are now at the Rafah crossing. And all these days later, three weeks later, they are still there. The United but States has a responsibility to de-escalate the situation. Yeah. We see the escalation on Congress the northern border uh, with Hezbollah. And yeah. I think this is the moment for us to de-escalate, yeah. to call but for a cessation of hostilities, and to allow humanitarian aid through and the negotiators to work to me, get the hostages released. Let me ask you about some of your comments. You have characterized Israel as a, quote, racist state. After a backlash, you clarified that you don't believe the existence of Israel is racist, but that the government engages in racist policies. Can you explain clearly what do you mean by that, Congresswoman? Well, Kristen, I clarified this right away, not after a backlash, within 12 hours of making the statement. I clarified that what I meant is that the existence of Israel is absolutely legitimate, and I think the world has come to see it as legitimate. However, there are racists within the Netanyahu government, and there are racist policies that Israel has been carrying out. I think it is important for us to recognize that we need to be able to criticize the policies of the Israeli government and uh, and not be called anti-Semitic. I, I really believe that conversation is changing in a way that is not helpful. And let me say this too, yeah. that at the end of the day, the, the president and the United States is absolutely uh, responsible because we also have been the largest military backer of aid to Israel. Yeah. We need to be able to question where U.S. taxpayer dollars are going and what accountability the United States has in ensuring, for example, that when the president calls for Israel to uh, adhere to the international yeah. laws of war, that they actually are doing that. Otherwise, we are complicit in a way that almost no other country in the world is. Congresswoman, let me ask you about some developments surrounding President Biden this week. One, we spoke to um, leaders in Michigan who said they were concerned that he is losing support among Arab and Palestinian citizens there because of his full-throated support in Israel. That also came against the backdrop of Congressman Dean Phillips announcing he is running against President Biden. Are you concerned that in a general election, both of these things could weaken President Biden's chances? Well, let me say, Kristen, that I have been one of President Biden's biggest supporters. I've been proud to be a partner as he has been courageous and strong on the domestic front. He has really called out the injustices for average working Americans across this country. But He's is he going to be weakened, Congresswoman, with, with this? Workers. Will he be weakened uh, well, with like this primary challenge? Well, I feel like I need to say this because, because what I think is that the president needs to be just as courageous on this issue so that we keep the unity within our country for the support of the incredible things he has done. He is, I think, um, you know, going to be challenged to explain uh, an issue of this moral significance to people. The American people are actually quite far away from where uh, the president and even Congress, the majority of Congress, has been on Israel and Gaza. They, they support the right for Israel to defend itself, to exist, but they do not support a war crime exchange for another war crime. And I think the president has to be careful about that. And I would call him, because I know him well, I've had uh, breakfast with him, I've had the honor of working with him, I would call him to bring us to a higher place, to let the American people uh, 
to, to really call to the American people on a moral issue of this nature. And then I think we can go forward and talk about the incredible things that he has done. But I am certainly concerned about his approach to this. And listen, my colleague Dean Phillips, everyone's got the right to run, but I'm sorry, I have no idea what he is running on that is different from what President Biden is running on. He took the same bold stances that President Biden has taken in this country on domestic issues, and I, I really don't see what, what he's doing. That's not the point for me. The point is, right. I want President Biden to be the next president, and he needs to call us to a higher moral place. All right. Congresswoman Jayapal, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. We covered a lot of ground here. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.